I'm Tracy. Welcome to my channel. I upcycle clothes and accessories and I mainly get my items from thrift stores and mainly Goodwill. And what I hope to accomplish is if you're a thrifter and you love thrifting like I do, maybe you'll go into the stores with a little different perspective on what you can do with items. When you walk into the thrift store and see two plain white cotton sweaters, do you see two sweaters or do you see possibilities? I am going to create a hat and a funky little sweater and hopefully it's going to turn out hot pink. So let's get started. I'm starting with this sort of boat neck white cotton sweater. It's a size medium. It's 100% cotton because I am going to dye it. and. It's very hard to dye synthetic fabrics, so 100% cotton, linen, silk, natural fabrics. What I did was I tried it on, and I want to crop it a little bit. I don't want my belly showing, so I'm not going to do a cropped cropped, but I am going to shorten it, and I stuck a pin here where I want it to be. But before I cut the bottom off, I'm removing these little pockets. Okay, so now I want to cut this bottom off and I marked it with pins four and a quarter inches up where I want it to be cut. And since I don't have a serger or really know how to use one, I'm going to go to my machine and do a zigzag stitch, a tight little zigzag stitch right above those pins. And I'm going to use pink thread because I'm going to dye this pink and sometimes thread does not dye with the fabric. So whatever color you're going to dye it, Try to use that same color thread. Now that I did my zigzag stitch where I want to cut it to keep it from unraveling, I'm going to go ahead and just cut below that line and cut the bottom off. I'll go all the way around. Here it is with the bottom cut. And now I want it to be off the shoulder. And you have to be very careful with sweaters. You can't cut the neckline too big because when you start sewing and cutting, it really stretches out fast. So you need to stay right next to the collar when you cut it. So what I did here is another zigzag stitch, and you can see it's pretty close to this neckline here. And I'm going to cut right above that stitching. The stitching helps it from stretching out. And even, this is a boat neck, it's sort of big. Even if you just have a crew neck, stay close to that neckline because there's nothing worse than having a great project ruined by a giant neckline and it won't fit you. You can always cut more, but you can never go back once it's all cut. So now I'm just going to cut right above that line. Now I'm going to decorate my sweater a little bit with some vintage doily pieces. I just cut little pieces of scrap, vintage lace and doilies. And I'm going to lay them along my sweater just kind of randomly, just to add some texture and interest to it. They don't need to touch. They don't need to be perfect. And then I will sew those all the way around my sweater. <laughs> Now I have my lace sewn across the bottom. All I did here was stay about an inch, inch and a half away from the bottom because I'm going to be adding more down here. And I just did one continuous line along the bottom of the lace and one continuous line along the top. And I used a smallish stitch. I want it small enough to be tight and hold the lace nice, but I don't want it to be so small that it takes me all day to sew it on there. And again, I use the pink because the pink thread because we're going to be dyeing this pink. 
Now I'm going to set my sweater aside for now and I'm going to cut little fringes to go along the bottom, the neckline, and the sleeve. And I'm just using vintage doilies and this one you can see is all cut up from scrap, my scrap pile. You want to try to make sure they're also cotton, otherwise they won't die along with the sweater. Once in a while you'll get one that has a synthetic blend and it doesn't die, but that's okay. It doesn't ruin the look of the sweater too much. So what I'm going to do is, see I have all these little pieces and I don't know, they're maybe four inches by half an inch to an inch. They all vary, but I am just going to take my doily and I am just going to cut little strips. Now all these little scraps that we cut, I want to sew them to the bottom of the sweater, around the neckline, and around the ends of the sleeves. And I'm going to do it all the same way. And how I do that is I take the scrap and I start, I don't start at the very end. I start maybe an inch and a half in, sew an inch, and then add my next one right next to it leaving about an inch unsewn, sew over about an inch, inch and a half, leave a, a little bit tailing down here. So basically you're just sewing the center of these little scraps onto the bottom of the sweater so that you have the nice little fringy effect down at the bottom. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so now I have all the little fringes sewn along the top, the bottom, and the sleeve. And what I'm doing now is I'm just going to just do a few little holes, moth holes basically. And I take the tiniest little pinch and I just make a little snip. And I'll probably do just a couple tiny more or a couple more tiny ones and then I'm going to take just a piece of cotton 100% cotton because it will dye also and I'm going to go to my machine turn my sweater inside out and I'm going to patch those holes from behind I know some people like the holes but I really don't want anybody to see my skin Okay, now I have my patch underneath and I did a zigzag stitch around here in pink. What I'm gonna do now is, I could leave it just like this, but if you know me at all, I never leave good enough alone. I always add a little more. And so I have this beautiful embroidered vintage linen that actually has been sitting around here for a very long time. And I'm going to cut out some of these flowers. I'm going to do two patches. They're either going to be like four by four or five by five inches. And I'm just going to cut out maybe the leaves and the flowers. And I'm going to put a patch on this side, maybe to balance the holes, maybe do something over here. And then I'll probably do a little one on the back. Okay, I have my two patches cut out. I'll put the bigger one on front, about right there, and then I'll put the other one on the back and I'll show you. Okay, here are the patches. I decided to sew them on at an angle and I used a zigzag stitch for those. And keep in mind, this is going to be dyed a pretty bright color. And these seem high contrast right now but wait till you see how they blend. They just become kind of a pretty textural tone on tone. You have to look and see if it's the flowers. Um, it'll just blend nicely with the sweater and be beautiful. Okay, so this is done and ready to be dyed, but before I dye that, I am going to make the hat because I want it to be in the same dye lot and match the sweater. So I'm gonna put this aside for now. To make the hat, I'm starting with 
another sweater that's 100% cotton. And I don't want to use this open part. So I'm just going to put those together and shift my sweater. I just want a clean open spot right here with no seams, no buttons or anything. Okay, so all I do now is take a pre-existing hat that I know fits me well. I line it up with the bottom of the sweater and I am going over a seam. I know I said no seams, but it's okay. So there, I have that laid on and I'm going to trace around it, except I'm going to go out half an inch because I want plenty of room for a seam allowance so that none of this sweater frame gets away from me. So I'll go all the way around about half an inch outside the hat. And now I just cut it out. And I did this wrong sides together because I'm, I guess I'm weird. I like seams and details and stuff. And so when I turn it inside out, you'll be able to see the seams. So what I'm going to do now is just pin, of course, not the bottom. I'm going to go and pin from this side up and around to this side. And then I'm going to go to my machine and just zigzag stitch it. Okay, so here it is all stitched together. I'm going to turn it inside out and kind of push out on those seams a little bit. I'm going to cuff that. So that will be sort of what it looks like, the shape. But I'm going to do one extra little step here. I'm going to take that same embroidery fabric, the vintage linen that we used on the sweater. I'm going to put a little patch about right there. I want it kind of tucked underneath where the hat will cuff up. And I'll just stitch that on there. I want it to kind of match my sweater. Okay, so now my sweater's done and the hat. I'm gonna take you up to my laundry room and I'm gonna show you how I dye these. Okay, so here I am in my laundry room. I wanna dye my sweater and my hat a hot pink. So I use Rit Fabric Dye and it's a lot of trial and error. So this is cherry red and I've learned from experience that it turns white fabrics hot pink, which I wanted red originally on an item, realized it was hot pink. Now I love the hot pink and I use the cherry red whenever I want hot pink. So hopefully it'll work out on this too. Um, another color of Rit dye that isn't true to color is black and it turns out purple. So if you wanna start experiment maybe, or you have used fabric dyes, black is purple. <laughs> And you may need to use like three bottles or a ton of the black writ dye in order to get the true like black color. I don't know. I've never been gutsy enough to, well, I'm gutsy, but I've never wanted something black so badly that I bought three bottles. So I will put this right in my washer and I'm going to show you what I do. Putting it in the washer is, you know, people gasp when I tell them I put it in my washer, but I've done it for years and all I have to do is when I'm done dyeing something, I do a hot soapy rinse, an empty load with hot soapy water and it cleans the tank for me and I've never had an issue with the dye getting on other clothes that I wash. What I do to dye is I just turn my machine on a regular hot cycle and I will pour Probably, I think there's like three-fourths of a bottle left in this. I'll probably pour like the whole three-fourths or maybe not quite. Like I said, it's trial and error. Um, and then I'm going to put a cup of salt in. And then I'm going to start my washer and I'm going to let it fill up for about five minutes before I put my materials, my sweater and hat in there. Okay, 
So I stuck my sweater and my hat in there and I'm going to close the lid and let it run a full cycle. Okay, so while the hat and the sweater are in the washer and dryer being dyed, I'm going to make the giant pom-pom for the top of my hat and I'll show you how I do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is get a stiff piece of cardboard and I'm just using this old priority box here. And I'm going to take just like a cereal bowl. A lot of people use like a cup because they want smaller pom-poms. Well, I want a big one. So I'm going to trace around this bowl twice. Now I want to draw a smaller circle on the inside, so I'm using the bottom of a small juice cup, and I'm just going to trace around that. Now I'm going to cut out that center hole. I made a cut down the side, and now I'm just cutting out the center. Now I took my two pieces of cardboard and I put them together and I'm lining up that little slit that I made. Okay, so there's the slits I made and I'm gonna make that even bigger. And maybe a little bigger, about like that. Now I'm going to take some hot pink yarn, hoping that my sweater and hat turn out hot pink. Um, and I am just going to start wrapping that around this, I call it a little donut. I'm going to wrap and I'm going to use a lot of yarn because I'm going to wrap all the way around, go back and go back maybe four or five times. I want a nice, chunky, large pom-pom. One more little tip here. Wrap it sort of loose. You, you want it, you don't want it loose and sloppy, but you'd rather have it a little on the loose side because we're going to go in between these cardboards and cut these. And if it's too tight, you won't be able to get your scissors in there. Okay. So now I've got lots of yarn on here. And I'll show you what I do next. Okay, so now I'm going to take a very sharp scissors. And remember, we have two pieces of cardboard. I'm going to go in between those two pieces of cardboard and carefully cut all the way around. And trust me, you want very sharp scissors for this or it will take you all day. Okay, now that I have that all cut, I'm just going to lay that carefully down. Okay, so next I cut two pieces of yarn about eh, two foot long. I don't need that much, but I why not have plenty to work with? And I'm going to slip that in between the two pieces of cardboard. Then I'm going to come through that little opening that we had carefully. And now these are sandwiched in between the two pieces of cardboard. I'm going to keep coming around. And then I am going to triple knot this. So now it's getting tied in between the cardboard. Now do one more knot. Okay, so here it is. I removed the cardboard before I got it on camera, but they just slip out easily. Now these are a little long, and I'm just gonna have fun just giving it a little haircut, shaping it up, make it into a little ball.
Okay, so now all I have to do is sew that pom-pom with a thread and needle to the top of the hat. 